Hello gorgeous, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. I am following up on my August chopping block. If you saw that video, if you didn't, I'll make sure that I have it linked, but if you saw that video, I went through my stash and I picked out some items that I haven't been using, that I have mixed feelings about, that I just wanted to show more love to, and I made a commitment to use them during the month of August, and also made a commitment to myself that if at the end of the month or the beginning of the next month I was not loving them, that they should go. So if that sounds interesting, just keep watching. Benefit Precisely My Brow. Now if you saw my latest video, I talked about my Ulta 21 Days of Beauty recommendations and I talked about how I enjoy this pencil. I do not think that it's absolutely necessary. There are drugstore alternatives. For example, today I have the L'Oreal Brow Stylist in, but this was one that I committed to using. Did it stand out above the others? No, it is a great brow product that I do recommend buying if you can get it on sale. And the great news is I finished mine. So I'm throwing it away, but because it's empty. <laughs> The next product was this Revlon Colorstay Grip Matte Primer. It's always just been an okay primer and primers are something that I'm just a sucker for. I'm always looking for the, the best primer and I will say that I'm glad that I chose it because in using it I did have some great makeup days in August. My makeup did wear pretty well. Is this one of my top five of all time? Absolutely not, but is this a good primer? Yes. It does smooth the skin, it does keep my oil away for a good amount of time. So this one, for a drugstore option, I think is a good one. And it's going to stay because I believe I'm making a good dent in this one. So this one's going to stay. Next I have the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Concealer. And this is one that I do like, but I don't find myself reaching for it. And I think it could be my fault because I think that the shade is a little bit too dark and then maybe it oxidizes because I've noticed when I use it for spot concealing, wherever I've spot concealed looks even deeper about halfway through the day. So for that reason, this one is gonna go. While we're on concealers, I also chose this one from The Ordinary. This is The Ordinary High Coverage Formula concealer. This is very inexpensive. This is only a $7 concealer and what was making me not reach for this one was that it was a little on the thick side, but I will say this has absolutely grown on me. Of course I have the primer on today and I also used this Ordinary concealer. And what I would recommend to you if you pick this up because you really, for $7 you are getting such a bang for your buck because this tiny amount, if you can see this on my hand, this is all you need for both eyes. I mean, it really goes a long way and you just have to be careful not to use too much, but it is definitely full coverage, does not seem overly drying to my under eyes. For sure, this is a good one and it's gonna stay. Next, we move into foundations and one of the foundations that I chose to commit to using is this one from Smashbox and this is the Smashbox Studio Skin Full Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. I like this foundation. The problem is that it's very thick. I have a hard time spreading it. It's fast drying, but what I like about it is how full coverage it is. So what I did one day as I'm doing my makeup, I thought, oh, goodness, this is so hard to spread. This is so heavy. And I found the same to be true for the other foundation that I chose. This is the Fenty Matte Foundation. And what I found was that if I mix it with another foundation, a thinner foundation, for example, this is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation that I love. What I did today, for example, is I put a bit of the Smashbox on my hand and then a bit of the LYS, mix them together, and then I actually used my matte sponge, my new matte sponge from Real Techniques today, but I've also used a brush uh, other days, and the thinness of this one and the finish of this one I really like, 
but this one is going to make it a little more matte and make it a little longer lasting. So this is a great combination. If you have a foundation that's full coverage, but a little too matte, a little too thick, make sure you mix it. Two of my favorites, and it's funny, this LYS reminds me of one of my favorite foundations from Walmart, the Oma by Sharon C. I believe it's called the IRL. I have enjoyed the LYS and the Oma by Sharon C the best with these foundations in the month of August. So for that reason, and because I do believe I am getting to the end of this, this is an expensive foundation. I'm going to hold on to it. So this one stays. Now the Fenty, the same thing applies in that it is thick, but it is full coverage. It is matte. My biggest issue with this one is that I believe I have the wrong shade. I got it on BoxyCharm and I think that the shade selection was limited. It looks a little yellow on my skin and then it oxidizes. So while I do enjoy the formula when thinned out, I'm going to find another home for it. By the way, I did, if you're watching my Will I Buy It series, the Fenty Ease Drop Lumi new product that they came out with that I said just made me want to try the skin tint even more, the Skin Blur skin tint, I did pick it up. So stay tuned, I'm gonna be testing that one out, finding out my thoughts on that, and I'll get back. So make sure you're subscribed. Next was under eye setting powder, and I grabbed this one is the Lift and Luminate Triple Action Finishing Powder in the shade Light. I've talked about this in a couple videos this month. This one is absolutely back in my top favorites for under eye setting powder. I do love this one. The other one that I grabbed was my e.l.f. Halo Glow. Of these two, I do like the number seven just a little bit better. So just in order to make room in my stash, I'm gonna say goodbye to the e.l.f. Halo Glow. For face powder, I had grabbed the Maybelline Fit Me, and oh, I'm so glad that I pulled this out of the way, way back of my drawer. This is a fantastic powder, and it looks like I am almost to the end of this baby, so I'm gonna hold on to it and see if I can finish it up. But if you like lightweight, yet mattifying, blurring of the pores for, I believe, less than $10, grab this. This is good. I have it mine in fair light. Bronzer. I grabbed my Huda Beauty Tantor and this was not a situation of do I want it or not. This was a I want to show it some more love. This is a little bit more on the pricey side. I picked this up during the last Sephora VIB sale and I love this stuff. I have this in the shade light. It is so pigmented. I made a nice dip in it, so I'm feeling a little bit better. Money well spent, right? But it blends so easily. It's so beautiful. This, of course, is going to stay. The one that I wasn't sure about was this one here. This is the Ulta Beauty Faux Glow Matte Bronzer. Is that an oxymoron? Faux Glow Matte Bronzer. I got this in a gift set. It came with like a brow highlight. It came with an eyeshadow palette. It came with brow gel and this was the only thing that I have hung on to. I might have the eyeshadow palette in with my eyeshadows, but it needs to go because it's not a great eyeshadow. This is the only thing that I hung on to and I wasn't even sure about that, mostly because of the shade. It says medium on it, but I feel like it's just a little bit too orange on my skin. I have used it this month. I have tried, I have done eye looks, but honestly, I have so many bronzers that I prefer over this one. I'm comfortable saying goodbye. Drink time. I also put this Hoola, this is the Hoola bronzer in here, and I did use quite a bit of it. And my biggest complaint with this one is that I like a bronzer that I can really swirl my brush in. So if this were full size, and I do have the Hoola Caramel, maybe that'll go in my September chopping block. This one, it just bothered me trying to get in there. I felt like I couldn't get the bronzer all over my brush, but I did make the attempt to use it this month. But because of the size, I'm gonna let this one go. I had two blushes that I was working on. One was the Ciate London Dewy Blush, and that one didn't even make it out of the video. I'm pretty sure in that video I said, I don't want this. I don't like it. I'd gotten it in BoxyCharm. It was too dewy, too sheer. It didn't dry down. 
that was a loser that went away the other one was the milk makeup and this was the lip and cheek tint in the shade work that i'd gotten as a birthday gift i think from ulta or sephora a couple years ago and this i think is old it just the smell is bothering me it smells like a really old crayon and the shade is not wonderful the formula is fine do I think there are more affordable cream blushes out there? Yes. So if you're looking for this, if you want to buy it at a discount, I don't know. I've heard that some of them smell like this from the beginning, but either way, it is bothering me. So it's going to go. We have a powder blush palette in here. And this was another one that I don't think I was questioning whether or not I wanted it because I love Ofra blushes. I love most everything that I've tried from Ofra. But this one was a lot of fun to play with this month. If I wanted peaches, I had it. If I wanted more pinks, I had it. This is like that pretty pop and pink that I've been so into lately. And then today, I'm not sure I've used this one. I used this one on my cheeks because I just felt like a, a very bronzy look coming on. This is beautiful. Charm Your Cheeks palette from Ofra. Got it from BoxyCharm. Definitely staying. For highlight, I grabbed this Benefit cookie highlight that I had made a good dent in and made an even bigger dent this month. This is a fantastic highlight. I have all of these products on so far. I have the backing up. I have the Huda Tan Tour. Of course, I have the Ulta Matte Bronzer and I have this cookie highlight on. It is a beautiful champagne, maybe tinging pink highlight that is just so blendable and gorgeous. It can be light. It can be stronger. It is beautiful. I would love to see myself finish this one. So this one is staying. The other one is this Fenty How Many Carrots highlight. And this is, it looks beat up and it's not very old. This is a silver topper that honestly, I think it's beautiful if you want that. See if you can see the silver sheen. What happens is if you put it over top of another highlight, it can really bring that glisten out. And I think it is beautiful when you do that, but just that extra step, I don't find myself doing. So this one, I'm gonna find another home for it. Next were the eyeshadow palettes. Now, when I did my August Chopping Block video, I used this palette. This was the Dia Noche from JCAT. I still stand by this palette. I think this is a great palette. I have really dug into this palette. You can have warm looks, you can have cool looks. Their shimmers are amazing. They really are so stunning on the eyes. Their mattes are definitely good. They are more of a buildable formula. I would say what JCAT really has going for it is their shimmers, but their mattes are nothing to blink at, and these are under $10. I would like to build my JCAT eyeshadow collection. If you have any favorites from them, I've been eyeballing them on Ulta's website, let me know because they do have a couple different variations, but this one is a great one. It is staying, I have traveled with it. I like it a lot, and I'm glad I was reminded of how much I like that palette. The other one, was the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette. This is one in my annoying packaging. I talked about how the pan sizes kind of bother me on this one. I'm more of a, I know it sounds silly, I like squares, I like circles, but these little rectangles bother me. Urban Decay's formula is a good formula. It's not my favorite shadow formula, but it is definitely good. I do have it on today. I watched if you know who Smitha Deepak is, I hope I'm saying her name right. I love her. She does some beautiful eye looks. I will link her channel. She did a look today where she put her eyelash curler on her eye and did the crease and then filled it in in the corner and I totally did that. That inspired me to do that with this palette and this one just because I know I'm not going to be drawn to pull this out because of the sizes. I'm going to let this one go, but if that kind of thing does not bother you and you like warm tones, you like warm browns and golds and like a nice variation from deep to light, I would recommend this to you and I believe it's on sale right now. So definitely check that out. It might be worth it. I just know I have this color story 
in my stash already. So I'm gonna say goodbye to the Naked Honey. I had put my Oma by Sharon C. This is the Batter Boom mascara. And I am happy to say that I finished it. I went to put it on the other day and I was really having a hard time building it up. And I thought, well, I think this little travel baby is done. Would I repurchase this? Absolutely. And I was watching YouTube today and saw that they have bronzers now. They are expanding that Oma by Sharon C at Walmart line. So please comment below if you would like to see a video of me testing more of those products because they are affordable, they are at Walmart. I am very interested. This one, I finished it. That's the only reason it's going. I also chose my Makeup Revolution Brow Glue. I tried to use it a few times. I do not like this. The problem is once it dries down, it has a super strong hold, but it doesn't hold immediately. I feel like it takes too long to set. Once it sets, it's it's there. It's actually hard to get off. But this one, not my favorite. Right now, I am working through my brow soaps. I love the one from Essence. I love the one from Shop Miss A. I have a brand new e.l.f brow lift that I haven't opened, although I saw that e.l.f just came out with the brow soap. Very interested in that. I was kind of waiting for it to come to Ulta. It's still at the e.l.f website. But this one from Makeup Revolution, it's a no. It's gonna go. For lip liners, I grabbed these Sephora Collection Retractable Rouge Gel Lip Liners. I have three of them, I believe. I had it in Rosewood, Mesquite, and Knock on Wood. I've tried to use these, I just don't enjoy them. They're just a little too gel-like. They, they want to move. It's hard for me to get a precise line. So these, while I love so many things from the Sephora Collection, are just not for me. So they're gonna go. I had talked about the e.l.f. Love Triangle Lip Filler Liner, and I believe that one didn't make it through the video, so that one's already gone. Seraphine Botanicals Luna Liner Water Resistant. I got through BoxyCharm. I do have it on today. And while it doesn't run, I don't have a huge problem with this. I just have others that I like better. I like my Essence, the Lash Princess Liquid Liner. I like that one better. Of course, my Holy Grail is my Gel Liner from Inglot. So this one, just making room. Don't love it. It's gonna go. The last item was the Rare Beauty Lip Souffle Matte Cream Lipstick. This one I am just not a fan of. It's, I would blend it out with my fingers and it was fine when I did that because it seemed to go on a little patchy when I would try to use it otherwise, but it is just not super long lasting. I'm not gonna spread it out with my fingers. I'm just too lazy to do that. So this one, while I kind of like the shade, that 90s brown is kind of my jam, the formula is not my favorite. So this one's gonna go. So I think I did a pretty good job of getting rid of some things, of falling back in love with some things, showing some things, some love that had not received love. I hope that this was fun for you. Stay tuned because my September chopping block is coming up. I already picked out a couple of eyeshadow palettes. I was digging through my foundation drawer and I'm gonna continue going through and either falling back in love or saying goodbye. So make sure that you're subscribed to my channel before you leave. I upload on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Give the video a thumbs up and let's have a conversation in the comments. Let me know. What'd you think? What are you trying to declutter? What have you recently fallen back in love with? I would love to hear it. I will see you in the next one. Have a great day.